Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom. This is Bishop Joe, the Seal Prophet in Asia. And I'm back to my office. And this morning, I just would love to, to share in this diary about angels. Who are these angels? As you know, angel is a spirit being, being created by God. But also with so many functions. But they are basically on earth as a ministering angel to the saints of God. Uh, I will not go into detail about it, but um, this one thing I know, there are two kinds of angels. One is the cherubim angels, and the other one is the seraphim angel. Now, the cherubim angel normally have wings, so you can see them in the throne of God, the four living creatures are cherubim angel with six wings and even two wings. But the seraphim is almost like uh, a human being, but they are angelic spirit. In Hebrew chapter um, uh, chapter 1 verse 14, Hebrew chapter 1 verse 14, we read this scripture. Are they not all ministering spirit sent forth? To minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. Amen. Now, I believe with all my heart that every child of God who have received this gift of salvation, who have the Holy Spirit, God have assigned angels, assigned angel to minister to us. And in this short diary, I will tell you that as a prophet of the Lord, I have seen the Lord has opened my spiritual eyes to see angel many, many times. And uh, I just want to share with you that when you walk in the right path, in the righteousness of God, you will be uh, given that opportunity or perhaps a uh, ministration way angel of God are there with you. It is a marvelous thing. If you keep righteous, holy, and just walk in the will of the Lord, they are ministering angels. And in my particular experience, I have seen, I call it, and the Bible call it guardian angels, my angels, that being assigned by God to protect us. The Bible even say that that the angel of the Lord in in Psalm in camp in camp in protecting uh, his people his children to protect him from from evil protect him from disaster protect him from the evil uh, a spirit in Psalm 34, verse 7 said, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivered them. You see, encamps around mean they are there to seal you, to protect you. And I will tell you, based from this scripture, I had this experience uh, just last year when the Lord sent me to Europe. For the first time it, and um, I was just traveling and preaching around in Germany I was preaching in Pentecostal churches in Germany and then the Lord opened the door for me to preach in few churches in Holland in the Netherlands and then um, I have a fellowship with few of our sons and daughters in the Lord in Germany and at one time I was um, invited by one of our uh, close friends who was asking to minister to them to pray and uh, she accommodate us to stay one or two nights in which we oblige and as i went there uh, i know that whenever i enter a house it is my custom that i will sanctify the place I would just pray in the room that they provide and ask the blood of Jesus to 
to, to cleanse because we don't know who stayed in that in that house before and they prov uh, and when i went to the to the house of that person um a german guy and his wife a thailand wife and one son i i, I usually don't ask their background you know but i appreciate the hospitality that they have and so i went there and uh, they gave me the the master bedroom with my wife and so uh, that is the utmost respect that they have that they are willing to give the master bedroom for us to sleep for two nights but i, I will tell you the first night that um i stayed i could not sleep i just I was just unable to sleep. Uh, I feel heat. I don't feel peace. I feel uncomfortable until that I, I have to pray the whole night. I have to pray the whole night, actually. I sleep only around 5.30 in the morning. You can imagine. And the reason being is that each time I, I lay down my head on the bed, I just feel not peace it's there's a tremendous heat in there so I, I know that whenever i sleep in somebody's house there's always disturbance over there uh, because the background of the house or perhaps something in the house so i've been praying and kneeling down i've been casting out devils and i who I, I was just asking the lord to protect us from all evil from all this um spirit uh, um, disturbance and I just pray in tongue and just worshiping God and uh, until the whole night I, I just could not sleep I don't have the peace so uh, so almost six o'clock so it's like five o'clock 5 30 I, I I am so tired I'm so tired and I began to just I said let me have a short nap for a while and and to recover my strength because you can imagine the whole day the whole night i did not sleep and so i just lay down on my bed my wife was on my 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 left hand side and i just lay down on my bed and i closed my eyes and um within minutes i don't know within minutes suddenly whether i dream or not dream but i was very awake in my spirit uh, something come out in between, in the middle between my wife and me. A, a big black dog. A big black dog. That's that's all I can say. And it come out and it was very, very uh, evil to see. And he began to attack me. And he's bite my hand as a matter of fact he swallowed my right hand he swallowed it up and i was struggling in the realm of the spirit and i just commanded i said in the name of jesus christ i command you to go and that dog just let go of my hand and it vanished and i wake up i was like you know i was fighting in the dream and I, I i i was i was using my physical hand and body to fight and to resist until when i wake up in the name of jesus i was still i was just still you know like fighting physically uh praise god i didn't hit my wife but i, I was just awake and my wife would say oh what happened and i said oh, wow this place is not good it's just not good you know i told my wife that I saw this, you know, and from there I, I could not sleep. I said, "Go to sleep," and I I I said, "Let me pray." And I said to the Lord, "Lord, I am just so tired. I need my rest. And now this evil in this house or in this room is disturbing me. And so, Lord, protect me from all evil." I prayed, and I just go and lay down again. And the moment I lay down, in one minute, 
or less than one minute, the Lord opened my eyes. And you know what did I saw? Low in front of me, in the door in front of me, because the door was just uh, under our leg, and I was laying down in that bed, in, in the in the bed, and I saw my two angels. You know, in my life and in my ministry, the Lord sent to me two angels. This is not the first time, but this is the second time that I saw them, and they were standing very tall. One on the left, one on the right, protecting that two door. And they look at me and they smile at me. And I look at them, I, I immediately recognize that these are the two angels that have been ministering and encamping and following me throughout the years. One of the angels, uh, both of them were, were white garments, but like gold dust kind of shiny garments. One of them, that was standing and, and they stood very strong. They are looking at themselves, uh, guiding that door and they look at me. One of them that was standing on the left was was in in gold, goldish hair color. All right. Very shiny. Whereby on the other side that what uh, and the other angel that was um, standing on on the right hand side. Uh, on the left hand side sorry on the left hand side uh have a uh, black hair black hair with a little bit of uh, a beard so they are shining and uh, definitely they are my two angels i've seen both of them before when i was uh, ministering um and and now i saw them again and with that one look, I feel so peaceful. And after that, I just fell asleep very soundly for one or two or three hours until I woke up somewhere at 10 o'clock or 9.30. So, I've seen them. And beloved, when you walk in the right part of God, in the righteous and holiness part of God, God is pleased and the Holy Spirit is pleased within you that the Bible says in Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamped around those who fear him. And he delivered them. Amen. He delivered them. Praise God. Now, this is not the first time that I saw back in 2007 when the Lord took me to heaven, sat at the table of the Lord in the Father's house. There's a big dance hall arena, worship arena there. And... That was a time when the Lord called me as his apostle and Jesus was 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 there with me talking to me uh, I had a faith that, that was my second time that I had a face to face encounter with the Lord Jesus but angel was there ministering to us helping and assisting us providing the food for the feast when we were on the table drinking and eating you know jesus said you will eat and drink with me on my table in the kingdom so i saw them in heaven there are lots of angels in heaven and they are really real ministering spirit they know their work some are army angels some are musicians some are those ministering angels who really minister now if you ask me have you ever spoken to the angel no they have not spoken to me, but they have revealed to me many, many times. Now, the first time actually I have, I have met my, my personal angels, uh, two of them was uh, many years ago. Uh, at that time, I was in Malaysia and uh, I, I, have, I, I have not been to Thailand before. So it was the first time I went to Thailand to minister and preach. But before I went to Thailand, the Lord showed me in a vision. And um, that's me to say that before I go to a certain country, the Lord showed me in a vision and, and the Lord just, just revealed to me that I'm going to, to Thailand to preach in Thailand, even I've never been to Thailand. You can imagine that? That, that is a kind of... Uh, uh, revelation so before I went to Thailand I had a vision from the Lord 
and is a vision dream of the night uh, in Malaysia. And in this vision, suddenly my spirit was transported to another country. And that country, and it is a countryside, and I, I basically am um, not so sure which country it is, but I was quite familiar the similarities of the environment. It looked like a countryside in my hometown in Sabah, in Malaysia. But I was just thinking, oh, why the Lord put me in this countryside? And I was just standing on the roadside, on the road. And on my left was like a hilly path, and there are many trees over there. And, and that road is quite a busy road, I should say, where where village people, simple people, just walk along, and uh, it's not modern. There's no car, but I see that they are walking on foot, and some of them are using a cow. You know, cow as a mean of transportation, and um, they were just going along this this street, countryside street, should I say? And so I'm led to just walk in. I was wondering which country is this. Where is this? I didn't know it's Thailand before because I've not been to Thailand. And today, I, I, I've been in Thailand for the last three, four years. And so now when I realize that Thai people love to eat beef, as a matter of fact, and <laughs> other things. And so uh, I saw cow walking along with people using the cow as a means of transportation to carry their, their vegetables or the, the things in the countryside. So, so I was led to just walk in through this um, uh, road. And after like a uh, uh, few minutes, I walked. And I saw on my left hand side, there's a big hall of the village. It's a community hall. You know, it's a, a community hall. And um, I, I saw that there are many people in the hall. It's like there's a meeting some way that, um, that's going on in that particular village or hall. And so I'm led to just go over there to see what it's all about. And when I went there and I walked through that, through that community hall, we call it, uh, there are over um, hundreds of people sitting and there are people in front of the stage that was speaking and talking. And everybody was so attentive to listen to the speaker. So I wanted to know, out of curiosity, who are they, you see? And so I just walked in from behind that hall through the door. And when I went to the door, uh, the door is open. On my left and on my side, everybody was sitting, about hundreds of them. And I, I saw uh, in the stage, there are two people, there are two persons on the stage. And uh, uh, I mean in front. And, and they were speaking something, they were talking something. And as I, I began to walk in, I want to sit, I was thinking myself that I want to sit down in the, in the, in the left heels of the chair. I want to hear and I want to know what is the subject matter and what these two persons are talking about. But while I, I walk through the aisles um, going, for, going in front, I began to see them more clearly. And the strange thing is that they are not just ordinary person, but both of them are very well built. They are like human. But they were two. Uh, they were white remnant, white robes, and the skin colors and the texture of their face are very shiny. And um, one of them, like I said, one of them have uh, like goldish hair, and the other one is black. And so immediately I perceive that these are not ordinary people, ordinary men, but these. Uh, angels of God but at that time I didn't know this is the first time that the Lord allowed me to see my angels I did not even know that they are my angels so 
while I was walking, I saw the the angel with the black hair was so busy writing something on a big white board. They are writing and writing. He is writing and writing, whereby the other one who, who is gold colored hair was a speaker. He was standing in fr uh, in that in that uh, f front stage, and he was speaking to the people, and that is where everybody was so attentive to him, and he was talking and speaking and testifying and talking, and so while I was walking towards the front pew suddenly he saw me and i saw him and he stopped from from uh, speaking and he pointed his right hand to me like this he pointed to me to me and he said now this man and everybody began to turn around the crowd began to turn around and look and everybody just looked at me and he said, Now, this man is very clear. He said, This man is destined to bear fruit. That was exactly what he said. This man is destined to bear fruit. And after that, there is a knowing immediately in my heart that says that these are my ministering angels. And then after that, the vision just just go gone. And I woke up and I was thinking, wow, what a word. And I was thinking, what is the, the reason and what is this angel is trying to say? This man is destined to bear fruit. Now, you know, I'm very conscious. I'm very discerning in a sense that I must test every spirit. The Bible, as a matter of fact, said test every spirit. And so I want to know, and I, I've been searching scriptures to support this. What does it mean this man is destined to, to bear fruit? It means, I know what he means that I am being called by God to be his apostle, to preach the gospel. And God has destined in my life that wherever I go, I, I will bear fruit. I will bear fruit. And so, then the Lord opened my understanding of what Jesus said in John chapter 15. And I found exactly what this angel said about me. This man is destined to bear fruit, bearing fruits. You see, you must be fruitful in a ministry as a, a minister of God. Not just to just go in and preach the gospel and teach and without any fruit at all. That fruit means to say that it is it, it, it produce produce the the similar kind of spirit, the similar kind of people or son and daughters who will in the end follow the pattern of the spiritual father. And they began to grow in a ministry, fruitful in a ministry. So this man is destined to, to bear fruits. And one fine day, I found this scripture in John chapter 15. And it confirmed to me of what the angel of the Lord has said to me in this vision. In John chapter 15 verse 1, Jesus said that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. And in verse 2, he said that, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bear fruits, he prunes that it may bear more fruits. Hallelujah. I am reading from New King James, you see. And, and on and on he said in verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Here is it that Jesus is teaching us that he is like a vine. And the father is the vine dresser. 
and what makes Father God please in the kingdom is that he look forward to it the fruits, the fruits of the vine. And that is why Jesus said, I am the true vine and you are the branches. So the church and every child of God is the branches. And through the process of pruning through the Holy Ghost, the purpose of the branch is to bear fruit. And he said, you abide in me and I in him. You bear much fruit in verse 5. For without me, you cannot do anything. Without Jesus Christ as the foundation of your life and faith, without Jesus Christ as your Savior, your Messiah, as the head of the church, we are the body and we are the branch, we can do nothing. And trust me, beloved, those who have been called in the ministry, who graduated from Bible school and theological school, trying to do the works of God, but it is not by the Spirit. Is by the flesh and there is no fruits in all. They may receive their salary as an academic, academian kind of, of Bible scholars, but you cannot see much fruit in them in terms of fruit of the spirit and fruit of the ministry. It is, it is just another school. But when you have the spirit of God, fill with the spirit of God, and God divinely call you into the ministry of a teacher as one of the fivefold ministry, or an apostle, or a pastor, it is divine calling. Because Jesus is the one who ordained and anoint and makes us become uh, a ministers of the gospel. And... This is what the Lord is trying to say, but I will not go into deep into that. But without Christ, the branches is worthless. Without Jesus, you will not be able to bear fruits. So abide in me and I in him. In verse 5 says, I'm the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And when I read that, it stuck to my spirit now that, wow, I said, that is truly a very powerful word and desire of the Lord and that is what exactly the angel of the Lord spoke concerning me in this reason he point to me and say this man is destined to bear much fruit and praise God for 35 years by the grace of God I've seen the fruit of my ministry build up churches as a bishop overseeing over 10 churches in Asia and in Belgium, wherever I go, I never do it in my own strength, but by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, I've seen much fruit. Fruit in the ministry, the members of the church, son and daughters will produce, going out and seeing the result of the powerful demonstration of the Holy Spirit as never before. But nobody ever spoke to me like this this is the first time that i heard when this angel said this man is destined to bear fruits it is so powerful that this has impacted me throughout the years whenever i go and minister and praise god it has been confirmed the angel of the lord encamp and surround those of god those belong to god and there are ministering angels sent. And you know, throughout the years, what this angel have done, I appreciate. In the name of Jesus, I appreciate all the angels of the Lord. We don't worship them, but they are our ministers being destined and sent forth for us. Throughout the years, I learned, and the Lord have revealed to me that this speaker, this angel who speaks so much, is the angel that being sent by God, because and, uh, and the Holy Spirit revealed this to me, this, can, this angel was sent by God to me to, to bear witness, to testify to me. You know, remember like, like the angel of the Lord came to Cornelius and said, go to Joppa to look for Peter. He will, he will tell you what uh, you need to do and the 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 centurion italian centurion sent people to joppa 
to bring Peter in, in, in Caesarea and then because of that the Gentile and Cornelius and his, and his people repented. Now these are the personal angel of Peter. He testified about Peter and the angel of the Lord said Cornelius your prayers on armor has been heard. Now go to Joppa to look for Simon Peter and he will tell you what to do. So these are the similar angel that was assigned to me, which I believe, and there are people who is testifying to me. Even a couple of days ago, he said that, man of God, I saw in my dreams, somebody came to me like you and, and pour out oil to me. It was white. It's not one time or two times, but many, many times. And I know that I need to receive you as my spiritual papa, my spiritual father, because I seen you in my dream coming to me, pouring out uh, uh, oil to me, ordaining me. And I said, okay, I welcome you. But I know that they saw me, but actually they saw my angel because that angel have the characteristic like me. They are coming to testify about me. And this, kind, this angel was, was doing the same in this vision. He was just talking to hundreds of them and pointing to me. But the other, the other angel, which is a black hair, was just a curly hair, black hair, was just busy writing on the whiteboard. He was just writing on the whiteboard. And, and I tell you why. Whenever I write books such as this, these, these books called the Holy Spirit, you should get a copy of it. Go to my website and get a copy. It's a wonderful book. This is not an academic book that I learned. This is a book with revelation, inspirational books that I wrote about 216 pages. Uh, the Paraclete, the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Spirit asked me to, 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 told me to write this book about the Holy Spirit. And when I start to put my hand and write on my book, I will be sitting there like six, seven hours nonstop just writing and writing for six or seven hours per day non-stop the inspiration will just come the it, it just come to me and scriptures began to open and it began to un make me un understand the meaning of it i began to write until within one month i managed to write 200 uh pages in this book it's a great book read it it is my ministry for 35 years. Everything about what I know, the Holy Spirit and the ministry I wrote down in this book. And so, why I'm able to do this? Because the Holy Spirit is giving me... The angel of God was helping me, delivering the message from, from heaven, from the Holy Spirit. And I hear it, and I begin to write it. Now, that is why you can see the work of this angel, the other angel, was writing. He just writes something. That means the Lord was showing to me that this angel is the one who will bring the message to me you have to understand in the book of daniel daniel's angel always come to him to deliver the message from god and so this particular angel is just good in writings and receiving the message from god and he will reveal it to me he will just uh, give that message to me and i write it down uh, Sometimes when I'm, I'm preaching, I just have this tremendous anointing to preach and to speak oratory words. I'm even surprised by myself. But I believe that this angel is the one who delivered that message to the church, to the minister to be delivered. Remember in the book of Revelation chapter uh, 3 and chapter 2, the seven churches. And in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, John, 
testify, he said, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant things which must take place after this. And he sent, in verse 2, and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bear witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, when the seven churches received the word of Christ, Jesus said to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write. To the angel of the church in Smyrna, write. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia or in Pagamos, to the angel of the of, of the church of this church. So I believe every church and every individual God have, have assigned angel to deliver the message from the Father to us. And so I have seen my messenger. I have seen this angel when I write my books or when I write something in, in, in my posting, in my diary or in my blog or in my website, the angel of the Lord is there for me, giving me words to write down. And I had a great help. I thank the Father for sending me his two angels. One is testifying about me. And the other one is helping me in my writing, in my preaching, and in my teaching. So, people of God, we needed this. Even Jesus, while he was in the desert, the Bible says that, for 40 days, 40 nights, he was there being tempted by the devil with the wild beast, but also the angel of the Lord was there ministering to them. So, that was the first time that I saw my two angels. And the second time when I was in, in Germany, I saw them even more closer. And I saw them, I can still close my eyes and I can still see them in my spirit. It is very, very sharp and very clear. And thank God for the ministering spirit. Are they not sent to minister those who are entitled for salvation? That is why one of the requirements of a children of God is to walk in the path of righteousness and holiness. Why? Because it may grieve not only the Holy Spirit in me, but it will grieve the angel and the angel of the Lord will not be able to minister to you when sin is there. Sin will block their activities. So it's very crucial, it's very important to just be led by the Holy Spirit, filled by the Holy Spirit, walk in the path of righteousness, in the will of the word of the Lord. And trust me, you may not see them every day, but trust me, the Bible says that he encamped. He is there. When you call upon the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus will send his angel. And remember, you always have a guiding angel. That same angel of Peter went and opened the prison of Peter and John while they were in prison at one time in, in the book of Acts. And he wake up Peter and he said, follow. And Peter followed the angel until it reached the disciples' house. And Peter began to knock down the door. And one of the ladies says that, wow. Peter is in front. And some of them say that it is Peter's angel because the characteristic look like Peter, but it was Peter's angel. And he began to testify that he was an angel of the Lord who released them from the jail. So I thank God. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you may see your angel, your guiding angel, that you may be comforted in the name of Jesus and walk in the path of righteousness. I thank God. I welcome the angelic visitation. I see that many of you will have an angelic visitation that will deliver the message that will tell you about the things that you need to do. Just like the angel of the Lord said to Philip, the evangelist, he said, Philip, go and join the chariot. Go. And Philip, go and join the chariot of this Ethiopian Enoch who just came from Jerusalem and preached the gospel. Because angel of God at this point of time is not able to preach the gospel. 
but he is a good testifier. He will testify. Go and look for Peter. Or go and look for uh, Joseph. This man will tell you things what you need to know. You see? So praise God for this ministration. In the name of Jesus, may you receive an encounter with your angel. May Jesus send to you his, your angel. May you have that comfort in all that you do. Be blessed in Jesus' name.